confessional. Today, I'm Angela. I'm Christine. And today we have some great guests with us. We have Susan and Glenn Wood. And let me just tell you what they do. They're the founders of the Hope Center for Autism. And uh, also since 2007, and also uh, Glenn's a photographer, local photographer for events and stuff. He's, we see him everywhere we go. And these guys have been married for 45 years. I just had to point that out. It's a long time. It's impressive. It's funny because people say, to the same person? <laughs> right? <laughs> so nice. welcome to the podcast. <laughs> well, Absolutely. You. We're thank so you. lucky to have you guys. But we have thank so you. many questions. Yes, we do. And I'm a little scared. <laughs> oh, oh, it's okay. It's just, we're just having a conversation. Yeah, we're not scary at all. <laughs> well, back to the 45 years of marriage. How did you guys meet? In the parking lot of the high school uh, in uh, Springtown. Springtown. We were both, we grew up together. So you were high school sweethearts. We yeah. were. Oh. We were. I love and, that. Uh, love at first sight. <clears throat> mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, I, my friend and I were, she lived down the street from the school and we were walking home and she flagged Glenn and said, hey, take us home. And so Glenn drove us to her house and that was the beginning of him courting you and me chasing him. You chasing him. We actually dated for almost two years before we got married. And when we did marry, she was 17. Still in high school. Oh, wow. I, I knew 19. he would tell so this story. So you were story. a couple years older. Yeah, I was 19. and I know there's some dirt right here. <laughs> I knew he would tell this. He tells everybody. And it's a great story okay. because you guys Small have been together love. for Small so long. Small town love long. happens that way. Yes. So we, we did things a little out of order. We got married and then we um, had children and then we got our education. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That makes sense. So it was kind of okay. out of I did the board. same thing. I got yeah. married at a young age at 19 and had my children and then decided to go to college and oh. was going, you know, working my business as a hairdresser. And then I decided yeah. I love being a hairdresser. Right. <laughs> so, well, yeah. you know, I don't think it, it matters how you do it as long as you do it together. Right. And you guys have such a great family. So, um, so tell us about the Hope Center for Autism. Yes. How did that get started? Um, well, I, uh, I was doing therapy, um, with, uh, a small group in Fort Worth and that, which I thought it was my dream job because I had traveled doing therapy going in home and, uh, for six years and they had a place on site where I didn't have to drive. I just drove to work. And so I was so excited and then that fell apart and, um, so there was a, just a, a huge upheaval when that took place. And so our daughter worked there one day a week. And, and she and I decided we would just get us a little office and we would work and it would be fine. We wouldn't go back to traveling because that was so hard. And uh, within two weeks, we had uh, seven staff, a full caseload of kids, and uh, a building rented and $8,000 cash handed to us. And um, the parents came in and furnished the building that we rented, painted and furnished it. And um, we were up and going <clears throat> in a little over two weeks. Boom, that's when you know God's got his hand God's, on it. It's, yeah, it's God's, totally. Yeah. And, and we had to get the parents to pay in advance because we couldn't pay the staff, because we were just like everybody else. Glenn was working full time, and I was, you know, working week to week. We were just, and then all of a sudden, we didn't have it. And so, um, And what yeah. kind of therapy were you guys doing at we, that point? We did applied behavior analysis. It okay. is the only mm -hmm. type of therapy that has a proven success rate with people with autism. And it has many, many replication studies from the original study that was done that shows that it works, and um, it's similar to what they do training uh, horses and, and different animals. It's, it's behavior modification, and so just a very simplistic version of it. All, all behavior is communication, and so what we do is figure out what they're communicating, and we teach to their learning style. And well, and there seems to be a big need for that in the Fort Worth mm. School District <laughs> because um, there's so many learning differences um, and, and parents just need help. They need an advocate. Right, and, and a lot of families 
don't really want to go with the district, the school district. Yeah. And so a lot of children with autism are homeschooled and they do therapy and, and take that route. Okay. <clears throat> so right. then how did you evolve into doing therapy and then going into the school? Well, we never really wanted to do the school. And um, we had a couple of kiddos that just weren't being successful in school. And um, like I say, everything we do is, is you know, uh, it's, a, it's a God thing. And so my daughter and I, it's, I've all along, I said, no, no, we're not a school, we're a therapy center, we're a mm -hmm. therapy center. And um, her and I started talking one day and, and I said, you know, I know that you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I think we're supposed to do a school. And she said, well, I'm so glad you finally caught up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, she had been thinking the same thing. And so, yeah, and so now she's um, running the academy part of. Okay, so educate us about the programs that um, your, your establishment does. Well, we do, primarily we still are that basics of the ABA, everything is ABA driven because that's what the research shows. There's no research really yet on classroom but the principles of ABA are still used within our classrooms. And um, so, I mean, we have, we have a speech that comes in and they, you know, she provides speech to our clients, but she doesn't work for us. And I, I would love to have speech and occupational therapy, but yeah, there's, PT, it's therapy. so different. It, it's so difficult to find, in, you know, people in, uh, in the field that are looking to come right. in and build with us. And so, yeah. um, and I know also too, that you do, um, art therapy. Well, we don't actually do art therapy, okay. but we do a lot of art, right? We you do a lot of through art. therapy. And, okay. and, and what we try to do is to offer the kids the opportunities that any other child would have, you know? And so we, we expose them to music and we expose them to art and we expose them to, you know, the different things. Uh, the kids in the school right now are doing stop motion and they're making videos and I mean it's just amazing uh, given the opportunity in the right environment they're so successful yeah right and so you're so, given the tools so yeah, that these so, these young kids um, is there an age category do you there's not so much an age category I mean we see a lot a very uh, we see all the way up to adults depending on okay. uh, their needs but I mean not not profound but what's but the those, youngest you take the youngest we've ever worked with was a 12 month old. Oh, okay. And, and that was interesting. And that was mostly teaching the mom how to, to right. encourage the child. It wasn't like we did a lot of therapy with that one. Most of the kids are two and up. Okay. And then, and so then, they can, they can, they're not all verbal probably. No, we have a lot of nonverbal. Yeah. We have a lot of kids start talking. I had a mom, um, the other day, uh, we have just started back our support group. And um, she shared with us that, that her son said mama the first Aww. time. And, you know, he's about six. And so it's just That's amazing, amazing thinking that yes. you never hear your child speak. And that we get to see that kind of stuff all the time. It's like we go to work and there's going to be miracles happen. It's just right. amazing. Yes. You just have to open your eyes and you can see God everywhere. So, Glenn, tell us why you picked autism out of everything. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We've always had opportunities with children, the, the daycare and different things, and we've had people try to get us to adopt children throughout the years. And I never really thought that was quite right for us because we have two daughters and that's plenty. <laughs> but uh, then the Hope Center came along mm -hmm. and we realized that's what we were made for because we have now 45 or 50 like grandchildren almost. You know, we. We love them all. We want the best for all of them, and it's it's wonderful. It's, They're your children that's, and grandchildren, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> right? That's what we're meant to do is to take care of these children. So when you started the therapy, you noticed more and more it was aut autistic children. Is yes. that why you decided to focus in on that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the, um, the initial uh, division was... Autism, definitely. because that's that's really the kids that have problems. Later on, they realized that's what that was the problem is that yeah, they had they maybe weren't diagnosed. They were autistic, they weren't diagnosed autistic and, correctly, and, and, and the nobody school diagnosed them as that. And then right. that was the problem. And, that's and we can the, all think back to our days in school where we 
knew some quirky kids right. that were a little different, mm -hmm. didn't like social situations, and they probably had autism. Right. But it was undiagnosed. It would, uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the definition of autism? <laughs> do, we, do we have a... A definition, because it is such a big spectrum, right? Right. You it got, it's, it's, That's uh, why it's called the spectrum, right? right. And it's you got autistic, huge. and some people mm -hmm. are individuals diagnosed and then, as by their friends as on the spectrum, which they're probably not, right? They're well, just right. We all have antisocial. We all have characteristics, yeah. Right. And and the difference is, do we have enough characteristics to meet the criteria for right. diagnosis? Yes. But, um, you know, I, I'm not. It's hard for me to say. Oh, this is. The, the definition. I, I like to tell people that their their brains fire differently, and so um, they they feel the world differently. Um, they don't react to the environment the way we do necessarily. Some do, but but as a just a general knowledge is you know some like to be deep pressure touched and some don't want to be touched at all and and some are verbal and some are not verbal and but they all communicate and and. You know that's that's opening the door is creating communication, but right. you know they're not. I think the more that not, we they're are not educated damaged. about autism mm -hmm. and understand it, we can accept it and have more compassion. Absolutely, that's the that's the um, one of the biggest things that, that breaks my heart is that we get the kids ready to go out into the community. And then the community doesn't receive them well, mm. and that's that's hard. Right. Um, I think it's lack of education. It is. Mm -hmm. I think it's try. because people don't. They're not um, understanding, or they don't have enough knowledge about the topic, and it can affect anybody, anybody's family, um, friends, coworkers, and it's just it's having that compassion to understand a little bit more and a tolerance for it for right. differences, allowing yeah. people to be different. Well, we've had so many clients, the parents have stories of being in a grocery store or something and their child has a meltdown and all of the odd looks they get from other people around. And well, people why saying, why don't you do spank them? It doesn't work that way. Yeah, physical abuse doesn't help no. in the you grocery store. It just I, really makes it worse. I, I, tell, I well, tell people. Well, let's not say spankings are physical abuse. No, I, but, <laughs> but I do say but. that you can't spank the autism out of No, child. you really no. can't. It, and it doesn't work that way. Addressing. It's not a lack of discipline. It's a lack of understanding on the child's side. Right. And, the, yeah. and the, the biggest thing that I try to get people to understand is that they can learn. They just learn differently. Right. And so where you could, you say, let's brush our teeth. Well, there's 27 steps to brushing your teeth. Oh, I see. So, right. so we it's overwhelming. You, it, everything. And if you then, it, then if you don't have the motor skills to open that tube of toothpaste and squeeze the toothpaste while you hold the toothbrush, right. and then mm -hmm. then I've got the toothpaste and the toothbrush, and I've got to turn over. Well, how do I get the water on it? Yes. Do I, you know, and so it's just. That is the way that they view the world is mm -hmm. that, you know, it's called, we do a task analysis on everything and, and it's step by step and we teach all these little layers and then it comes together. Mm -hmm. And so, That's so great. basically if I had a child that came into your program, mm -hmm. you would diagnose them. No, we don't no? diagnose. Okay. So they're yeah, already diagnosed. I, I, yeah. They're already diagnosed when and they come you, in. So you see the paperwork and you know, okay, this is this is the game plan? Do you create the game plan? Okay. Every child has their own game plan. Right. Every, every, there's not a program to put your child in. There's a program it's built for your child. It's tailored to each child. And so, um, the, you go to the doctor and you get your prescription, more or less, mm -hmm. the diagnosis and the prescription, and then they bring it to us. And then, then we have to create a plan, a treatment plan and, and, um, then we submit it to the insurance, and the insurance spends lots and lots of money trying oh, not wow. to pay for it. <laughs> and then um, when we prove that there's a medical necessity, then we get them. And and it's not like speech therapy, you go and get an hour a week. This right. is this is 35, 40 hours. This is a full-time job this for these full -time children. This is a full-time job for those kids yeah. that and come so, into the program. Yeah, and so, you know, and different ones um, are different. Like the babies, mm. we... we work their schedule differently depending on their tolerance and their the ability for them to... Um, so whether they get um, approved for, I guess, through in their insurance or if they have to pay out of pocket, it can be really expensive for um, a parent to have an autistic kid and go through the program 
to try to um, give them the tools so they can yeah. succeed in life. Exactly. So I had a question about that. Do you mm -hmm. guys do scholarships for kids? We we tried to do a scholarship, and with the nonprofit and the way that the insurance works and all the crazy rules that are involved, we have to be really careful about how we go about it. But we do raise money to keep our costs low, and we we provide uh, parent training for if a child didn't if the family didn't have autism. I mean, didn't have insurance. Sorry, right. if they didn't have insurance, then and they come in, then we do a program for them that is that is um, as close to what they would get with insurance, but we don't charge them usually for the parent training element. Okay. We don't charge them for a lot of those things. And our cost is less than most places. It's probably so. more of a sliding scale depending on their income. Well, or... pretty much anyone that doesn't have insurance, yeah. then we, we try to supplement that. And, you know, they, you know, where it might be twice what we pay down the street, you know, for, for without, you know... So, yeah, you can look at picking up a house payment, easy, the equivalent of right. your house payment. You know, so you go and your child's, you know, you know there's something going on and, and you go and take them to the doctor and within two weeks you find out that you're going to have to pick up, you know, thousands of dollars. It's probably, it's a couple of thousand dollars uh, a week right. for therapy, you know, wow. to provide what... You, that child right. needs. I understand. And, so, and a lot of, you know, I used to, not so much now because so many people work, but I used to, we would train the moms and, and the family members and they would do the therapy. And so and those that was, people. That's probably very effective. You know, it, it is. Because it's I in the home. But I, I encourage moms to be moms, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, find a college student, find somebody that you can figure out a, a way to afford it and let us train them and help you get it going. Right. Um, they always say it takes a village to raise your child. <laughs> and I really do believe that it takes a whole community mm -hmm. to help your, to help your, our children. Right. And, and, you know, we, we, <laughs> it's funny because I can't even, I, they don't let me answer the phone anymore <laughs> because I would bring everybody in, you know, and Glenn's like, okay, this is still a business and we have to pay the employees. We They're funny that way. <laughs> they, right. And so, yes. and so right. it's, it was really hard for me because I, I would just bring them all. You would have, you, know? you would love to help all your babies. They're all, yeah. And I <laughs> right. did for a long yes. time. And then it was like, okay, we're, it's, we're, overwhelming, it's yeah. not working financially. Yeah. We can't keep going like this so, so when I met you guys um several years back mm -hmm. I um you guys were doing um charity work and it was for fundraising mm -hmm. for the Hope Center for autism and I really didn't know much about you guys um I'm not from Fort Worth I'm from Arlington and it just seems like we're a little bit more separated but since I have gotten to know you guys you have really um put forth the effort to educate people mm -hmm to Thank make awareness you. and to really um, tell people that there's a problem out there and we need to have more compassion and love. Um, you mm, know, that, makes me, that, that chokes me up because <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what we want to do now is we yeah. want to educate right. people and, and well, yeah. and I think and I even did, did a tour. Events. I did a tour mm -hmm. of yeah. your um, establishment and mm -hmm. I was really impressed. It was really a needed experience because you're right at all different levels. These you've got, you know, autism, autism spectrum, and it's just trying to understand, like, how, how are we struggling? What, how can we make this a better place? And you know, we do it every day, and we're never do we not have a day where we're like, how can, how how are they all so far apart? You know, because they're right. so individualized. Yeah. And well, and without the fundraising. Um, you, oh, yeah. It would it would hurt your school. Well, COVID would, during COVID we had no fundraising, and we're still trying to recover yes. from that. Um, we up until COVID we had no debt. We'd never had any debt at all, and um, there was no fundraising. Obviously, there you know, and right. we were we were a um, what did they call it? Where you could essential. still work essential? Yeah, we were as, considered essential, and we saw, you know. Um, our healthcare workers and our our police and firemen and the families that had you know we continued to see those kids and then we saw um, the others that still wanted therapy because it is so essential and um, we kept doing business and we kept you know but we 
Well, because we the problem doesn't go away. No. The children don't go away. No. Yeah. And, and it, <laughs> it actually, just gets worse. <laughs> it actually made it much worse. COVID, right. The, the lockdown made it so hard because, I mean, we still have people, and I have young people every day, teenagers and young adults that are saying, you know, I got out of the habit and now I don't want to leave the house. Yeah, I just, just want to stay home. Yeah, just when you got them socialized right. and they're so, not socialized uh, anymore. Yeah. Well, and so many mm-hmm. kids had depression, I mean, along with oh, adults. Oh, still, yeah, um, still dealing with And they were just them. fighting those anxiety, leaving the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the suicide and then, rate went up to the skyrocket and nobody even talks about that, how many people. Right. Yeah, and no, it, absolutely. It the lockdown, like, really made everyone depressed. And, and it, it increased the number of young adults that we have gotten feedback from a lot mm. more young adults needing support because they they want to stay home and play on you know play games and watch you know do nothing and veg out and mm-hmm. you know every week we have parents that I get emails saying he won't leave the house and he won't do this and he won't you know and 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 the the, the long term effect of that lockdown is is really uh, it's been substantial for for autism it really has but back to the fundraising part of it we we do fundraisers so that we can provide for those underinsured and those uninsured, and that's how we do that. Is is the fundraisers, um, you know? Because I would think it would take a lot to um, maintain your employees, your establishment. It does. Um, <laughs> I, I would think you'd have so many different resources that you're pulling in together to make you know, everything come together so you guys can be successful. And it takes staff to go and to deal with the insurance. That's a lot. You know, we, we, you have staff that generate revenue when they're seeing children for the, you know, the insurance is going to pay for that child to be seen, but then there's someone that has to deal with the insurance and that, that person's revenue is different. It doesn't equal out to two, you know. Right, right. the, 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 The therapy might get paid for, but that, those other you know, the other areas have to be paid for too. And so yeah. it's, there's, you know, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm, I try to be very, very conscious of how we spend the money. And I feel like, you know, God's entrusted us with a lot. And so Absolutely. Um, trying to keep everything uh, as tight as we possibly can. But, you know, you have um, specialized staff. People are like, why don't you have volunteers doing therapy? Well, legally they don't. They can't. Well, you have to be. Oh, is that, you is have that to be certified. True? Yeah, people all the time. Oh. All the time. Yeah, you have are to saying, be certified. That is too bad. Well, it, it. You know, you, you, you hire people in, and they, and we, we train them, and we get, we get them. They do the course, and they do the, you know, and then we still have to train them, you know, because each center and each each uh, establishment has their version of, uh, you know, what that what therapy looks like and, right and so not anybody uh, can very, do it right you've got to be yeah. and there are you've variations be aba is a very or certified yeah there's very very um there's there's variations to aba there's there's a very strict rigid and then there's what we do now is called a scent base which is a lot more communication driven and and it's a gentler um type of therapy and so yeah I mean it's just it's a lot you have to have ongoing training for your staff you have to have you know you do the parent training and all those all those little things you know um add up okay Glenn so how many kids do you guys have enrolled now probably there's an ebb and flow (laughs) yeah uh 55 to 60 okay oh wow so the highest amount you've ever had Probably close to 70, 75. It, it's, it's a balancing act because it is a one-on-one therapy. You have to have a therapist there for every hour a child's there. And so... You can only rotate so many. Yeah. yeah. Only, so do right. you collaborate with other nonprofit organizations? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Be, because yeah. you're mm-hmm. dealing with children. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have, a, we have a lot of, mm, that's you know, great... Fort Worth has a lot of great people. Right. They really do. And then, do you um, do you collaborate with Fort Worth ISD as well? Since you guys are in Fort Worth, it, it or, is. You know, we we do. We attend ARD meetings, and we try mm-hmm. really hard to you know to support that child that's in the school system. And yeah, we try. It's all case by case. You right. Know, it's not like oh, let's go to the school and 
No, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's But all, if a parent needed support yeah, in an ARC meeting, yes. then you would be there and then you would absolutely um, be able to yeah. help them yeah. um, for and, future. And, you know, uh, it used to be that, that the school didn't like seeing us coming because, you know, parents, for a period of time before insurance paid, they used to try to get the school to pay. And so they'd see, a, you know, think we were coming in in an adversarial role, and we're really not. We're coming in as a support. Mm, right. You know, we all we all have. You're giving the, the tools. <laughs> well, and and I took an advocacy course about how to help families, and I used to do a lot of that work. And there's a story about uh, these two men, the three men. One man sees the two men fighting over an orange, and the orange gets destroyed because they're just going at it. They want to do, you know, they want that orange. And then the third man said, what did you want to do with that orange? And he said, well, I wanted to make juice. I wanted orange juice. And he asked the other man, what did you want to make? Why did you want the orange? And he said, well, I wanted to make orange rind candy. And in the process, the orange was destroyed. Right. And we're we're just coming from a different angle. We need to communicate better. And we and <laughs> and and so that's what I try to teach parents when you go into that ARD meeting, is they think that their direction is the right direction for your child. Right. And and it doesn't matter that you disagree with that. They they don't understand you disagreeing just as you don't understand them not getting right. at what you want. And so um, you know it it can be a it's, it can be really, really bad, or it can be workable. Right. Yes. Okay, yes. so you guys do several events for fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite event of the year, usually? And then what do you have coming up? Go, Glenn. I'll let Susan. Oh, Glenn, I know. Glenn, Susan, His, he would say the golf tournament. The golf, golf tournament. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Like I've golf. never done the golf it tournament. It is fun. <laughs> but he we, plays. He doesn't I, do the... <laughs> okay. I thought you had helped that time. Were you no. in there? I, I've done the, I mean, I've helped with the Kentucky Derby, and yeah. I've done Mayfest. Yes, yeah. that's um, right. So the favorite, is, your favorite's the golf tournament, and yes. what's your favorite? Oh, my favorite's the wine pairing dinner. Oh, yeah, I like that. That's, yeah. I've only been once, but, um, yeah. and then what do you have coming up? We have a Top Golf golf tournament coming okay. up. Okay, Top Golf? Yes. When oh, is that? that's going to be fun. That is the first Saturday in First Saturday in April. Okay, the first Saturday I in April. I think it's the sixth is at Top the Golf. At Top Golf. Okay, we'll, and we will be teams there. Teams of six. Yes, absolutely. Teams of six. <laughs> okay. And uh, we're gonna have a sign. It's gonna be like a golf tournament. Yeah. Only it's gonna be a Top Golf. Fun. Fun. And uh, so that is gonna be. I'm excited. I'm not yeah. that great of a golfer, but I like to swing. <laughs> okay. One more question. One more fun question. So, um, what do you guys do on your time off? Well. We <laughs> we it, it, we listen to local music. That's yes, our that's thing. fun. Bands in we the area. We have seen you guys out and about. We're not. It, it's so <laughs> funny because we're not drinkers and we don't dance anymore. We used to, but, but live music. Do you guys awesome. like country music? We, we, that we is do. our. Is that the yeah Texas well, Red Dirt? Yeah, music. and and the bluesy end of it, right? Yeah, now, yeah. Red but we enjoy the music, and I enjoy taking photos of the musicians. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. really enjoyable. So is taking pictures um, a hobby, or is it more <laughs> of your business? It's still a hobby. I rarely charge for what I do. I volunteer for some of the other charities for their galas and different things, and then the musicians, I just supply them with photos yeah. if they want them. Yeah, I mean, well, you you're know, a natural at it. Well, if anybody we, comes to you, you need to yeah. charge them. Well, we <laughs> had we had hoped that someday, I don't know when that'll be, if we ever retire, that that, that would be a side gig. Oh, yeah. You know, that you could we totally would do, do that. You know, but, but Glenn just enjoys it so much, and it's hard for him, especially like when we do, um, like Wish With Wings. We did their... Yeah, uh, breakfast with the kids, and that was so much fun. It was a secret because you know only mm -hmm. you have to be invited, and yeah. Santa was there, and it was a blast, you know. And that's awesome. so, I mean, that's one of the places that we volunteer for, and you know, we we're 
poor, we work for a nonprofit, so we have to volunteer our time. Well, sometimes people think if you work for a nonprofit, you're rich. Yeah. yeah. That is not the case. That is not, yeah. I was going to say, that's usually not the case. It depends on the, the nonprofit, case. actually. It depends on the nonprofit. It, yeah. And if it it's a real, a true nonprofit, role. then you're, the you're not rich. And, you know, and, right. and, you know, one thing that we haven't mentioned that I'd really like to say is that um, the Hope Center, we've been super blessed to have our family involved mm -hmm. our daughter uh, both of our daughters at one time worked for us but our our oldest daughter is, has been when we met I mean she's one of the founders and so her and her husband both work uh, with us and it's very it's a huge blessing yeah to absolutely be able to, well, you to have, have this same passion yeah you definitely to, have educated both of us mm -hmm. well I you know and and the less therapy I can do the more on the education <laughs> side I try to do. And so right. that's, right. you know, I have, we were able to get a, a little grant from uh, Park Place Motors. Oh, nice. And uh, it's for us to be able to do, to re, to open this uh, support group back up and to do some community education. That's great. So, well, and you guys have another location too, right? In Wichita Falls? We do have a, right? Wichita, yes, yes. Congratulations, oh, you just keep you. expanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, there just wasn't any opportunities up there, and it was heartbreaking um, that that there wasn't enough. I mean, there's never going to be enough. Yeah, right. Autism is so rampant that there's right. never going to be enough therapy. And it's just more but and more there, each year. Yeah, but there just really wasn't anything up there. And so when we found that out, I couldn't get past it. And so um, and my daughter and I And your vision was to open up an, another location. And that's funny because originally, no, no, we'll just get bigger. We're never going to open another one. We're just going to get bigger so we can have it all under one roof. No, that's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. He wants us to, to spread that direction. Yeah. And, uh, well, I can't wait to see what you guys are going to do next. <laughs> okay. okay, so now is the time of the podcast where we talk about our products. Okay. Yes. So, Christine, what did you bring? All right. So, I love perfume, but I like I sneeze a lot. So, <laughs> but this is one of them that I really do love. Um, it's called Coco um, Chanel, and it's uh -huh. Mademoiselle. And this oh, is Mademoiselle. It. Yes, uh -huh. and I just yeah. love it. So, anyways, all right. I miss, well, my, I miss perfume. I, I have allergies now. Smelled that one, but um, okay. So, I brought a Mac eyeliner, pencil eyeliner. Mm. Um, these. Things are like 22 bucks, but it's totally worth it. It's long. It's a long pencil. It's It'll pencil? last a long time. Yeah, huh. and it's a um, it's a pencil, so you, you can sharpen, sharpen it. it. Oh, mm -hmm. well, yeah. You get your twenty dollars. Yeah, you would yeah. totally get twenty two dollars out of this. This is gonna last me five years, probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe four. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's called Teddy. Um, and it's like a shimmer brown. And my dog's name is Teddy too. Oh. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll take that. What would you yeah. bring, Susan? I brought something that everybody can get at the drugstore, super easy. It's a Maybelline Super Stay Matte Ink. And this stuff is crazy. Um, I have taken my makeup off, and you don't take it off of your lips usually, and and woke up the next morning and look in the mirror, mm, and I have lip. no makeup, and I have lipstick, <laughs> and I'm lips. like... Hey, that's a good lipstick. I mean, yeah. The Maybelline and, Matte. And I tried the more expensive Ink, brands. Right? And I went back to this. I don't think necessarily expensive no. um, this stuff, lip products are worth and, it. And you eat. Yeah. I mean, I can put I put it on on the way to work, and then most of the time, most of the time I don't even... Like, if we have events after work, I yeah. don't even have to reapply. It's That's awesome. Crazy. I'm going to have, have to try it. it. I, I have to try it. <laughs> and it's, I'm it's, it's not super... I mean, it's like eight bucks, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to have to try it. I have a, sucker for, I have a yeah. bunch of And I love colors. that color as yeah. well. Yeah. I have I have several colors, so... So, Glenn, look at the camera and tell people how they can find the Hope Center for Autism. Right uh, you could go to our website. It's uh, www.hopecenter, the number four, autism.com. Dot org. And... It's both. Either one. Yeah, dot it's order both. Dot com. Uh, you can find out a lot of information there. There's also a donate button if you want to get involved that way. We would appreciate it. And we'll put it also in the description too. Yeah, Good. We will. Yes. yes. When yeah. I when I started working in the field of autism, it was one in fifteen hundred. Wow. It's one in thirty seven now. Yeah. Or thirty two, depending on which which um, the numbers are amazing. One in thirty two children. If you don't know someone with autism, you're not looking. Yes. Right. 
because they're there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, and thank you guys so yeah, much. Yeah. We so really much. do appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate yeah. it. Yes. This was awesome. Thank you. All You're right. Welcome. And you guys connect with them on their website. And we thank you so much for being here. I'm Angela. I'm Christine. And thanks for watching Hair Color Confessional. Goodbye. Bye.